beautiful people. It's Mad Dog World Podcast. Bring you another episode. Hey, it was a crazy, crazy week of football again. NFL, college. Hey, them Thursdays, them Thursday nights, them Saturdays and them Sundays, they hit different now. It's that time of the year, man. Love it. I wouldn't change it for nothing. But look, we're about to tap into some things, man. You see what I got on. It feel good to be able to put this back on and go out in public again. You understand? We here. We here. It's not fake. We is here. I told y'all, I love what Mario Cristobal down there doing. You feel me? Straight up. Shook the staff up. Brought in two new coordinators. And, and it looked like it's paying off. I like both of them. I like both of them. Get on um, Lance Guidry. I like him. Defensive coordinator. That defensive line, that front seven. Shit, the whole, the whole, the whole 11 on defense look nice. You know what I'm saying? And um, Shannon Dawson called a hell of a game. I said, if the Miami Hurricanes, I said it last week. I said, if the Miami Hurricanes are to beat Texas a and we have to throw the ball down the field. What, what did they come out and do? We threw the ball down the field. We, we took shots. He knew when to take the shots, too. Oh, man, what Tyler Van Dyke was like 21, a 30, like 370 yards, five touchdowns, zero picks, zero turnovers. You can't ask for a better game from your QB than that. I told y'all this was the best offensive line that we done had in years. Mario Cristobal is an offensive line guru. Him and his, him and his right-hand man on um, Mirabal, they offensive line gurus, man. And I looked at the offensive line. Boy, that thing looked vicious. That man had a clean pocket damn near the whole game. And do you know how talented Texas A&M is? Especially on the defensive line? Man, hey, listen. A-plus across the board. Special teams, offense, defense. Hey, it feels so good, man, because we needed a win like this. I know it's still early in the season. We got a lot of big games left on the home schedule or whatever. But to go to be the SEC team that we struggled against, I mean, they beat us last year. You know what I'm saying? And um, we just needed this win to keep building that momentum. We're doing a hell of a job recruiting. Um, the transfer portal is paying off for us. Uh, I want to recap that game. I mean, it was a lot of big plays. But the play that stood out to me the most, the play that flipped the momentum, I really, I think it really, really flipped the momentum because every time they will, they will go up, we will answer. But that kickoff return by Brashad Smith really flipped the momentum. But the play of the game, I think it was like third and like three, maybe. Um, I think it was third quarter. We got a five-point lead. Texas A&M is, um, you know, it's been a back-and-forth game, so you don't want to give up the lead. Jaden Davis, probably the smallest, probably the second smallest corner on our roster, right? Um, they run the ball. The running back get ready to break, um, break outside. Amari Daniels, he's a South Florida native on Texas A&M. They started running back. Came from Miami Central. You know what I'm saying? Highly recruited. Um, he come outside. He, 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 he tried to get outside. Jaden da um, Daniels, um, Jaden Davis met him. Forced fumble. A hat right on the ball. Perfect. Perfect. So many corners in that situation wouldn't have ran the alley like that. They wouldn't have... Um, they wouldn't even try to tackle. They probably just tried to get him on the ground. He put his hat on the ball. That changed the game. That changed the game. They never got closer. They never, they, they never really threatened us after that. Um, that was a play of the game, in my opinion. That was a play of the game. But it was filled with lots of good ones. But that's the play that will always stand out to me, for real, for real. So shout out um, Jaden Davis, for real, for real. Big play. But um, we got to keep building on this. We got, we got, um, got Bethune-Cookman tonight. I expect a lot of the... Um, Second and thirteen guys to get reps. Um, we can't let up. We can't let up at all. We can't let up. I think these next two or three games should be cakewalks. I think we get. I think we got Temple next week. After that, um, we should handle them with ease. But I just like how the team is locked in. Mario Cristobal preached that hard work and is showing. Let me tell you something. I am. Such, I'm a fan. Anytime you have a football team and you got a good offensive line. Oh, Oh, it make it that much easier, man. I'm telling you. Listen, offensive line play is critical. We already know the trenches on both sides is critical. Everything starts in the trenches. Offensive line, defensive line. But when you got an offensive line, man, hey, a good offensive line can win you some money. Believe that. Remember that. Good offensive line play will win you some money. But um, let's tap in. Um, I want to start with some in-state schools. Um, Florida State still look, they still look like a big threat. 
still look like a big threat. ACC right now is balling. It's balling. SEC is not what it is right now. You feel me? Um, Pac-12, they still pretenders. A lot of offense, no defense. Later in the year, that shit going to get exposed, especially come playoff time. You know what I'm saying? So it's looking like the ACC is really on, um, really that conference this year. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. Um, Big Ten, eh, we'll see. But ACC, that's where it's at right now. Florida State, like I said, still doing their thing. Mark, um, Mike Norvell, he got he, um, hey, it look like they got a machine over there. So that Miami Florida State game, I'm looking forward to that one. I will be there in attendance. You feel me? Straight up. Um, South Florida, still struggling. I don't know. Um, got to go out and get some good. Co you got to go out and get a good coach, man. Turn that thing around for real, for real. You have to break the bank. That's the only thing really going to save a lot of these schools. You got to break the bank. Tom Herman, still a fan. They lost a close game in Ohio. Still think, still think they're going to do big game, um, big things this year. Uh, shout out Tom Herman. I think that's a great high for a FAU. It's going to pay off for them. They'll probably get two, probably get about two good years from him. He'll probably go back to the power five level, you know what I'm saying, based off the success he have at FAU. Because FAU is one of those schools, you do good there, you're going to get that shot to go back up to power five. You feel me? Um, FIU, nothing to talk about there. Still struggling. Um, UCF um, beat Boise State. Hard fought game. Psst. UCF undefeated, still looking good. Still looking good. But UCF, you're going to have to throw the ball down the field at some point. You're going to have to. You know what I'm saying? We know Gus Malzahn is a spread run first coach, but you're going to have to throw that ball down the field for real. Shout out UCF. Um, Florida Gators. <laughs> hey, hey, look, I'm telling y'all now. I'm not a fan of Billy Napier. I don't think he's a guy. You know what I'm saying? Good recruiter, though. Great recruiter. Probably a great guy. I don't know him. You know what I'm saying? Never heard nothing bad about him. But like I said, I'm not a fan from what I've seen on the field. You feel me? Um, they got a big game this week. Tennessee. If he loses this game, boy, that seat, that seat about to heat up some more, boy. That seat about to heat up some more for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? So that's where we at with that. Oh, I want to touch on another thing. How about that Oregon minus six? That Oregon minus six. I fell asleep. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't sweating the game or nothing like that, but I fell asleep. I didn't expect us to cover like that. When I woke up and I checked the score, I said, damn, we won by eight. So I go look at the box score and the play-by-play, -play, and I said, ain't no motherfucking way. This is how we won this. Ain't no way. Sometimes you need miracles. Sometimes you need miracles in this game. You feel me? But guess what? A win is a win. Oregon minus six. Only thing that matters when that clock hit double zero is you winning or not. That's it. And we won that one, baby. You feel me? Let's go. Let's get it. I spoke to y'all about gambling. You know what I'm saying? Hey, gamble at your own risk. You feel me? But I want to tell y'all this. We've been on an unreal run since last Friday. Unreal. We hot. You better jump on the team while we hot. You feel me? I got a free one for y'all today now. That's only one. On Saturday, we play between about five and eight games. Five or eight games. Tap in. We is hot right now. You know what I'm saying? Mad Dog World 15. Get at me on IG. ASAP. ASAP. You know what I'm saying? Check this out here. Um, the game I kind of got my eye on that I'm going to throw to y'all, man. I think this is a, I ain't too sold on it, but I think this might be the one. Matter of fact, I'm going to throw two out, though. Just to, you know, I, I really don't have nothing finalized to Saturday. Saturday morning. You feel me? I got to sit, think on it. Got to let it twirl in the gut a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. You feel me? But, um, yeah, I'm going to have you cut that part out, too. Because <laughs> that ain't sound right. <laughs> hey, but look, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, um, ain't nothing really finalized to Saturday till I, um, you know what I'm saying, get my real gut feeling, sleep on it, work out. You know what I'm saying? So, First game, we're going to go Oklahoma State versus South Alabama. We like Oklahoma State at home, minus six and a half. Mike Gundy team has looked. You know what I'm saying? I'm waiting for them to turn the on. I'm waiting for them to turn the corner. I don't think the South Alabama team is as good as last year's South Alabama team. I think last year they won like 10 games. You know what I'm saying? And Oklahoma State, a power five school, man. So, you know what I'm saying? I like what they went out west and did. They beat Arizona State last week. That was a good win for them. Um, especially how they buckled down in the fourth quarter and just took over, you know what I'm saying? So, Oklahoma State minus six and a half. We're going to jump on that, buy it down to minus six. You feel me? That's one of the ones I like.
Iowa State money line. Iowa State versus Ohio. That, them the two right there. Let's see how they do. Them the, them the two free ones I got for you. You feel me? But tap in because I tell you on Saturdays we play between five and eight games. You know what I'm saying? We um, we went six six and one in the NFL last Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Tap in, man. I'm telling you, you won't regret it. Mad Dog World 15. That's M A D D O Double G World 15 on um, Instagram. Get at me. But look, I want to jump into um, NFL real quick. Another crazy week. Another crazy week. Hey, damn. New York Jets fan can't catch a break. New York fans, period, can't catch a break, man. Yankees struggling. Mets struggling. Um, the Giants had the worst performance we've seen in ages from an NFL team at home and on a 9-11 um, remembrance. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Then the Jets, the first offensive series, Aaron Rodgers tears his Achilles. Man, what's the, y'all curse. Y'all curse, man. Let's not even get into the Knicks. Y'all a curse, man. But um, way to battle back, win that game. That was a big game. Um, way to battle back and win that. You know what I'm saying? But this is what I want to touch on real quick. I'm a huge Dolphin fan also. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, I love college football more than anything. But I'm a huge Dolphin fan too. What the Dolphins did was so impressive to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, we know how explosive the offense is going to be. We're going to score points. We got two of the shiftiest receivers in the game. And look, there was a preseason um, receiver ranking that came out and they had Tyreek Hill ranked like number five or six. But one person that stood out, I think it was um that stood out that was above him was Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase ain't nowhere near better than Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill, in my opinion, is the best offensive weapon we've ever seen in the NFL. And I have to put him over Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders, in my opinion, was the best thing on offense the NFL has ever seen. And consistently, Tyreek Hill is that guy. Unguardable. I guarantee you, even if you're a lockdown, you're an alpha corner, I guarantee you, when you see that week that you got to play Tyreek Hill, I know deep down inside, you a little shook. You really want to go to your D.C. Hey, man, I'm going to need some help over the top this week. Unguardable. No, there's not a more feared player on offense in the league than Tyreek Hill. And I'm glad he's on our team. I'm glad he's on our team, straight up. But um, I expect the Dolphins to win that division. Ain't no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, I expect them to make a nice playoff run this, um, this year. And um, that's where we at with it. Wilson, give my dog a break, man. I've been a Russell Wilson fan for years, on the field and off the field. You know what I'm saying? But I do like... Um, what Sean Payton said to him, hey, Russ, stop being, stop being so nice. You ain't got to be nice all the time. Hit that switch. Pull that dog up at you. You know what I'm saying? Snap on a few people if you got to. You know what I'm saying? Like he said, you ain't trying to kiss all the babies for real. For real. Snap if you got to. Big dog, for real. But my man in a bad predicament again because they done had so many injuries at receiver. And I'm just like, damn. After the year they had last year, it wasn't all his fault. We know that. It wasn't all his fault. This year, you got to love the head coach. Sean Payton's a proven winner. I'm a fan of Sean Payton. You know what I'm saying? He knows what the fuck he's doing on offense. You feel me? So, I expect him and Russell Wilson. I was expecting a big year from them. Even with being in the division with the Chiefs and all them other teams. But I wouldn't look at the injuries they got at receiver. Man, it's going to be hard to overcome that, man. Damn, it's going to be hard to overcome that. I hate that because now he's getting all this backlash. And it don't help that he in a damn state. With Deion Sanders making all this noise, you feel me? So, um, Russell Wilson, I hope you have a big year. Hope some of them guys that we don't even know their names, I hope they um, can make some plays for you on the outside. Look, another game we didn't, um, we didn't talk about, Alabama and Texas. I'm not surprised. I'm not that surprised, you know what I'm saying? Alabama breaking in a, a, a non-traditional quarterback, you feel me? I guess he's going to be all right. I ain't really get to watch the game yet. I ain't really went back and watched the highlights either. But I seen Texas, big win for Steve Sarkeesian and them. You know what I'm saying? I feel like college football this year is wide open. I'm not impressed with Georgia from the little bit I done seen. But I just feel like this year is wide open. It's for anybody's taking. And the Hurricanes look like we might have something to say about that. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I hate FSU, but you got to get them boys. Got to get them boys their credit. They look hella good. They look hella good. You know what I'm saying? 
But um, yeah, it's wide open, man. Anybody can go out there and snatch that shit this year. And this is what you want to see in sports. You want to see competitiveness every week. When you take the field, you want it to be a dog battle. You know what I'm saying? From a fan perspective, we want to see a, a good ass game. But just watching blowouts all the time, that, that shit ain't that, that ain't what it is. You feel me? So like I said, the transfer portal that made college football much more competitive, and I love it. I love it. you can't just look at that calendar, that schedule, and be like, hey, this a win, this a win, this a win. Nope, no sir. Let's go. Let's get it for real. But um, check this out. Hey, look, hey, prime time. The boys two and zero. Oh. Listen, we covered it. We talked about this for weeks before the season. Vegas had prime time Colorado Buffaloes preseason win total at three and a half games. They're already halfway there through the first two games. Two more wins. We talked about this before the season. I thought that was going to be the most popular bet. Man, that was a lot. You don't get shit like that often, man. You don't get shit like that often. Hey, hey, hindsight, nigga, I wish I would have cleaned out the count, sold air, got them thing, went and dropped it on that, my nigga. Straight up, that's free money. That's free money in the Pac-12. Come on, man. When he remade his roster and brought in those ballers, he was already better than 70% 70 of the teams in that conference. There's only three teams that I can tell you right now that I know that I think are better than him. But, you know what I'm saying, that's – I can't even really say Utah right now because I don't know if they're going to have enough offense. Defense is going to be stout. But I would say Washington, Oregon, and I think they really kind of even on um, with USC. To be real with you, I think they kind of even with USC. Yeah. So um, that's going to be a big game too when them two play. That's, well, that, that's going to be a big game for real. But um, shout out to Prime and them. And look, check this out. They got a rivalry game this week. They play Colorado State. Colorado State got a black coach over there too. Jay Norvell. Um, damn, what's my guy's name? It's not Jay. Jay Norvell. They've been around, been in the league, um, been in college level for a while too. Been around. He said something about my parents taught me when I'm talking to adults to basically take off your hat and take off your shades. Now, we all know you really can't say nothing bad about Prime because he's going to take it personal and... However, you know what I'm saying? He's not one of them guys. He's always done things his way, whether it was right or wrong. You know what I'm saying? Arrogant in a sense, yes. But he wasn't. That's prime. You know what I'm saying? That's prime. You know what I'm saying? I don't always agree with everything he do. But, hey, you know what I'm saying? Jay Norvell said, hey, take off your hat and your shades when you're doing press conference, when you're speaking to people. Hey, so, <laughs> so I, I expect prime to get wind of that. And it's going to make for um, probably another ass whooping. They probably about to go in and beat the dog shit out of Colorado, um, Colorado State. You know what I'm saying? Probably about to. <laughs> hey, man, y'all better stop fucking with Prime, man. For real, for real. Them boys on a mission right now, man. Y'all better stop fucking with them boys. For real, for real. But um, that's another game. They've been doing crazy on the ratings, man. I think like back-to-back -back weeks, they done had the highest, view, most viewed game in college football. I'm like, damn, you know what I'm saying? He doing big things over there, for real. Another thing I want to address, somebody said something about could he jump to the NFL ASAP. I think it's a possibility once his kids leave. I, yeah, once both his sons gone, that's a possibility he could go to the NFL, try that. Because now once, one thing about it, um, we've seen when a successful college coach makes that leap to the NFL, whether they do good or not, they're open with welcome arms back to at the collegiate level. And they don't have to drop down to um, a non-Power 5 school. They usually get a Power 5 job. So say somebody throwing around that when he coached the Cowboys. Of course Jerry Jones would accept them. No doubt about it. Because Jerry Jones is a diva himself. He liked that. They want that attention over there. Cowboys like being the face of everything. You feel me? So I think he could go over there and coach if, if, if that position came open. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, um, yeah, man, like even if he didn't succeed at the NFL level, he go right back to college, no problem. Power five. The best power five opening he would get. He would get, especially if they keep on having the success that he's having right now in Colorado. You know what I'm saying? But um, shout out to Prime, man. Shout out to Prime. Hey, I know. I'm saying they might go look at Kaepernick. I would like to see my dog Colin Kaepernick back in the NFL. Give him a shot. Let's see what he got. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's give him a shot. Last time we seen him, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't that bad. You know what I'm saying? The, you know the talent still there. He looked like he in great shape. The arm's still there. Bring him in, give him a shot. Um, give him a shot, man. 
For real, for real. But the kid they got now, Zach Wilson, hey, this will make a break time for him now. You know what I'm saying? Everything back on your back now. He got to deliver. But if he keep up them turnovers, he going to find his ass out the motherfucking league. For real. They not going for that shit no more. Everybody, from the coaching staff to the fans, they fed up them turnovers. He get out there, he get to throwing them picks, turn that bitch over. Man, I'm trying to, they go, boy, I'm trying to tell you, boy, boy, I'm going to have to delete all the social media. For real, for real. It's going to get ugly. Yeah, for real. But um, I think they need to look at, of course, Tom Brady. You, you should make the phone call, see if he's interested in coming back, of course. Um, Cam Newton's another name out there. Carson Wentz, Matt Ryan. I think those are the guys you look at first. You know what I'm saying? But they already came out and said they happy with Zach Wilson, but you got to sign another quarterback because you just lost one. Who they, who they going to sign? I don't know. But I think you should make those calls to those guys first. Tom Brady, without a doubt. Um, Carson Wentz, Cam Newton. Matt, Matty Ice, Matt Ryan, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, they had high expectations this season. That Aaron Rodgers um, injury, oh, my goodness, boy. Damn, 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 damn. And I think um, I think the kind of competitor Aaron Rodgers is, I think he's going to go through that rehab and come back. He ain't going out like this. Nah, I don't see it happening. Not the kind of competitor he is. Oh, no. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people say his age, he might just hang it up and all that. Yeah, probably going through his mind, but he ain't. It ain't going to happen. I'm telling you now. He going to rehab that shit, and that motherfucker coming back to play next year. For real, for real. Hey, some big games in college football this week, man. Tennessee visiting Florida. Big rivalry game. <laughs> all the pressure's on Florida. All the pressure. You feel me? A win right here will go a long way toward cooling down that seat on Billy Napier. For real. A big win right here. But you got Tennessee and Tennessee, a hey, Tennessee one of them teams on the up and up. They building off what they did last year. I still ain't sold on the quarterback yet. You know what I'm saying? I want to see him throw the ball down the field a little more. You know what I'm saying? Um, my guy that was there last year, he in the NFL right now. Can't think of him. Can't oh Hendon Hooker. My guy Hendon Hooker, um, he in the NFL. He was slanging that bitch last year. He was slanging it. You feel me? For Tennessee to be as good as they were last year, they're going to have to do the same thing. You're going to have to repeat that for real, for real. But they're going on the road to face Florida. That's, that's a big game. Big game in that conference. Um, like I said, we got Bethune Cookman tonight. Smash them. Smash them. Um, Florida State playing Boston College. Boston College, another coach. Um, Jeff Hadley. He on the hot seat. Came from Ohio State. Was a good, was a good coordinator. You know what I'm saying? Boston College. I don't think their expectations are too high. I think at Boston College, you should be competing for a bowl game every year at worst. But um, it don't look like he done turned things around at all. They starting to regress. And then you got this you got this machine, Florida State, coming in there. And they got all the mojo right now, the momentum. And I think they're going to try to thump, thump them boys. They're going to try to thump them boys. I think the line like 27, 28. Hey, I think them boys, them boys aiming for another 30-plus win. For real, for real. I think Florida State going to thump them straight up. Um, a team, let me tell you, another team, a dark horse to make the playoffs this year. Great coach. Got a great coach. I've been a fan. I've been a fan for years. He he actually won at one of the places it's hardest to win at, Vanderbilt. James Franklin. James Franklin and Penn State. This supposed to be their year out of the um, Big Ten. From what I've seen from Ohio State, I ain't sold on them. I ain't sold on them. Penn State done look hella good. Hella good. Hey, a dark horse to make the playoffs for real, for real. And James Franklin, a great coach, man. Great coach. Shout out James Franklin, for real, for real. And he don't get enough credit for what he did at Vanderbilt. Who you know don't want at Vanderbilt since him? Who you know won at Vanderbilt before him? I think that man, I think one year, did he He might have won 10 games. But every year he was like 8-5, and 9-4. Every year Vanderbilt damn near. Well, turning out draft picks. For real, for real. Great coach, man. And in the SEC, during the time Nick Saban, all these coaches were there. Yeah. Yeah, so shout out James Franklin, man, at Penn State. Georgia. They get um, visited by South Carolina. Another conference game. Um, we should see a little more from Georgia this week. They favored the win by 28. I think that line too big. I think South Carolina going to throw a few tricks at them. 
think they'll keep it close. Um, Georgia not explosive as they was, um, especially with that quarterback Carson Beck back there. Like I said, Stetson Bennett, the quarterback last year, was a baller. He was that guy. Great athlete. I'm not sold on Georgia. I'm not fan. They're not going to three-peat. I'm saying that again. They're not going to three-peat. So erase that shit out your mind. For real. All right, let's jump to the NFL. My Dolphins. We visit the Patriots. Bill Belichick time has passed them by. He's going to have to sign some big-name players, start paying his players, stop thinking you can do more with less now. The shit, the shit ain't working no more. You know what I'm saying? Since Tom Brady left, you've been 500 coach at best. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you're one of the best to ever do it. But <laughs> think about even sniffing a Super Bowl, them days are over. Because you ain't changed. You ain't changed at all, man. Pay your fucking players. Go get you some big name players. You ain't got nobody. And then Ezekiel Elliott, hey, I understand the market wasn't that um, good for you. You probably signed with, you know what I'm saying, wherever you can fucking go at the time. But boy, you ain't about to do shit over there. You ain't about to do shit over that New England Patriots, boy. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> this might be the end. Hey, the end might be coming near for Zeke, man. For real, for real. Straight up. But um, I expect my Dolphins, smash them. Smash them. I know, the, I know the Patriots, they played the Eagles close last week. I expect the Dolphins to smash them. And I really don't fuck with the NFL like that, especially when it comes to betting. Because you always got to fucking sweat that shit to the last two minutes of the game. You look up, you be like, God damn, bro, I'm, I'm tired of sweating these motherfuckers, man. For real. You bet that NFL, mark my words, 80% of the game going to come down to the last two minutes. Straight up. Every week. Every week, for real, for real. So I expect the Dolphins to smash them. Um, Rams, Rams in a close one. I'm going to say Rams in a close one this week, for real, for real. Um, they at home. It's going to be a dog fight. But like I said, hey, never never think about putting your last on, on an NFL game, ever. <laughs> Tell you that now. Never think about that. Don't let that shit cross your mind. That shit cross your mind, you better go slap yourself. So get that shit out of there, for real, for real. But um, yeah, man, y'all tune in, man. Like I said, get at me on Instagram, man. Mad Dog World Fifteen. That's M A D D O Double G World Fifteen. For real, for real. We on fire right now with these picks, man. I think we like might be like twenty four of our last twenty nine picks since like last Friday. You know what I'm saying? The app we like to use is Bovada. Bovada.lv. They got the most action. They got twenty four seven action. You know what I'm saying? Um. Like I said, tap in. Tap in and get them picks for real. Let's go. Let's get it. Man, you know what I'm saying? I've been keeping quiet about the Tracy situation. But it's an ongoing situation. Really don't never stop. Like I said, I need that apology. I need him to get in the ring. You know what I'm saying? Offer the man $4,000 to go three rounds. He didn't want to do it. You know what I'm saying? For real, for real. Uh, <laughs> hey, Tracy, everybody. Everybody that knows us, even some of the people that don't know us, they want to see the fight. You know what I'm saying? Get in the ring. Stop acting like a hoe. Get in the ring. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't stand you, dog. Like, you one of them little cats. You just want to, oh, boy, I can't stand you, boy. You such a bitch. For real. For real, for real. Hey, and guess what? Trace, I'm 310 pounds. Hey, guess what? I cut that red meat out again. I'm thinking about going vegan again, getting this weight up off me, boy. But I'm still moving so good. I'm still moving good. The hands is great still. And you know that. <laughs> I think you deep down, you know that. You know what I'm saying? That's why you running. You feel me? But Trace, what you want to do, man? What you, you want to do some one-on-ones, man? Seven on seven. We, $200. Told you on Facebook today. $200 for you to race me. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I can beat you in anything. I feel like you ain't better than me at nothing. Nothing. I, hey, I can't stand you, boy. You hear me? I can't stand you. Straight up. Get in the ring, pussy. <laughs>